So before we start implementing MobX, it would be helpful to have an introduction to this particular state management system to see what we're going to be using in our application. So let's go take a look. And the MobX API is pretty small. In fact, the four methods in gray here, the observable, the action, computed, and reaction, these are the only four methods from MobX we're going to be using for our stores. And the one in orange, the observer, we're going to get this from a separate package called MobX React Lite. And this provides a higher order component. And we can use this higher order component to make our React components observers of our store. And when a React component is an observer of a store, any changes to any of the observables are going to be observed by our React component. And if there's changes, then our React component is going to re-render and update the content on our page. But first of all, let's take a look at this API and we'll start off with the observable. And we've got two observables in this case, just a, a first name and a last name that have been declared as strings and initialized as strings. And what we also have here is a JavaScript class for our demo store in this case. And we're importing the observable from MobX. Now in this particular example, we've declared our observables with the decorator syntax. And that at symbol in front of the observable is a decorator. Now decorators are still experimental, but because we're using TypeScript, we have the freedom to make use of decorators in our application. And this is the way that we'll create them in our application as well, because it feels to me a bit cleaner to use decorators rather than not do de use decorators. But we don't have to use decorators. There is an alternative, and I'll demonstrate the alternative in the summary of this particular section. We'll just focus on creating our MobX stores using decorators. Now, observables in MobX are not quite the same thing as observables in a, a stream library, such as RxJS. And RxJS helps us react to events, whilst MobX will help us react to values or the state of our application. Now, if either of those observables change, then anything that's observing these observables is going to be notified. And in the case of our React component, it's going to cause it to re-render and display the updated values from our store. And the React component is wearing spectacles in the bottom right-hand corner because it's important that we make our React components observers of observables. Now there's another package that we're going to install as well as MobX called MobX React Lite. And this provides us with a higher order component that we can use to turn our React components into React components that are capable of observing observables. And that's the way that we're going to connect our components to the store. Well, two ways in fact, because also in this particular class, we have an export default and we're creating a context and creating a new instance of our store that we're storing inside the React context. Now we'll talk about the React context very shortly, but for now, just consider the React context as a place that any of our components have got access to. And if we wanted to store some kind of state that any of our components can access, then React Context lets us do that. So those are observables, and we also need a way to change observables. And for that, we can use a MobX action. And actions are anything that allow us to modify the state. Now we use actions when we want to modify our observables. And in this case, we have an action called setFirstName, which takes a name as a string as an argument. And then it sets the first name observable to the name we pass in as an, as an argument. Now what's important to note here is that we are mutating states. And this is one of the key differences between a library like MobX and a library like Redux. In Redux, this is not possible. You can't mutate states in Redux. In fact, you can't even mutate state in React. But MobX has been designed so that in order to update an observable, we have to mutate state. This is how the system works in MobX. And the recommendation is the code would work if we didn't have the action decorator there. 
But it is recommended from MobX that anything that modifies an observable or has side effects is decorated with the action. And that's because actions will batch mutations and only notify computed values, which we'll talk about next, after the outer action has finished. So we get better performance if we decorate our functions that modify observables if we use the action decorator. Now something else we'll use from MobX is a computed value. And computed values are values that can be derived from the existing states or other computed values. And conceptually, they're kind of similar to formulas in spreadsheets. And these help to make our modi modifiable state as small as possible. And they're also highly optimized and it's recommended to use them wherever possible. So if you've already got some states, in our case we have the first name and last name, then we could use a computed property to get the full name based on those two pieces of state. Now if we used an action to change Bob to Robert, then our computed property would be notified and it would automatically update. And any React component that's observing that computed property would also be notified of that change and it would re-render. So we'll be making use of computed properties in our application when we already have the state that we need to generate the computed value. Now the other method that we'll use inside MobX is a reaction. And a reaction tracks observables from within inside the store itself. So in this particular example, a reaction takes two arguments. And we tell the reaction which observable we're interested in tracking. In this case, it's the, the first name. And if the action to set first name is called and it updates the first name, then it runs the second argument we pass, which is a function about what we want to do based on this observable changing. Now we can pass in the results of the observable changing as a parameter to the next function. And in this case, we're just logging out the updated first name. But these are very powerful and we can take actions based on our observable changing with inside the store itself. So the other thing I mentioned earlier was the React context. And where do we store our stores? How do we access our stores from anywhere else in our React application without passing it down as props? And what we can use is the React context. Now the React context is primarily used when some data needs to be accessible by many components at different nesting levels. And we want all of our React components to be able to make use of our MobX stores. That doesn't mean that we're never going to pass down props to a child component. We will do sometimes. But more often than not, we're going to access our MobX stores directly from our React components. And by storing our store in the React context, then we have access to it from anywhere. Now what we can use inside our components is we can make use of the context by using a React hook called use context. And then we pass the name of the property that we want to access from the context as a parameter to use context. And then we can store that in a variable for use in our application. And in the second highlighted line here, all we're doing is destructuring the two properties from the demo store so that we're able to use them inside what we're rendering on our page. And there's just one more thing that I want to mention before we move on and start getting our hands dirty with this. And that's the observer. This is one of those things that's really easy to forget because you don't see any errors if you don't add an observer. But if you don't make your React component an observer of an observable, then your React component will not be notified of any changes to that component. And what we need to do so that our React components can be notified of changes is to make them observables or observers. And what we can use is the observer higher order component from MobX React Lite. And the observer is a function that takes another function as a parameter. And the parameter that our observer is taking in this case is our React component. And what our higher order component, this observer, does for us is it returns a new component that has the capability to observe observables. So now we've looked at the concepts of MobX, we're actually going to start using it in our application. And we're going to take a look at that next.